One night, I was alone in my apartment and I decided to put on a tape. Specifically, shelf number 709 from Warsaw, Indiana. On it was an old CBS primetime block that started off with a show that I'd never heard of. It was called Princesses and it starred Fran Drescher, as well as Julie Haggerty and the model Twiggy, as three women living in a shared apartment trying to make it in the big city. It wasn't anything spectacular, but it certainly caught my interest. I looked it up to see if I could find any other episodes online, and while I couldn't find those, I found an amazing story that I had to tell you. And now, here we are, two and a half years later, and I'm finally going to tell it. This, my friends, is one of the craziest production stories I've ever heard. So let me tell you all about Death by Drama, the downfall of Fran Drescher's Princesses. It all started in 1991. At this point, CBS and NBC were fighting it out for the top slot. One week CBS would be on top, the next it would be NBC, and CBS was looking for something to help them clinch that coveted title of the most viewed TV network in America. Fran Drescher, who wasn't as big of a star as she is now, but of course still had a lot of clout in the industry, pitched the show Princesses, and CBS bought it right away. And from that point on, everything involving princesses was an utter disaster. There was constant infighting going on with the cast and crew. The only exception being Drescher and Twiggy, who got along very well. And in fact, after Princesses wrapped production, they remained good friends. One of the main sources of drama seemed to be the other co-star, Julie Haggerty. CBS, and for that matter, Haggerty herself, have been quiet as to what exactly went on behind the scenes, but what we do know is that it caused fights every single day, during practically every single shot, and caused production to be a nightmare for everybody involved. Naturally, Entertainment Tonight caught wind of this, and decided to make it their mission to ensure that every single person in America knew what was going on behind the scenes. CBS, in a desperate attempt to do damage control, ran constant advertisements for the show, enforcing its wholesome and witty nature and calling it a promising new comedy. Unfortunately for Drescher and CBS, this only served to fan the flames of the ongoing drama, since they were intentionally ignoring the reports and allegations, and were instead trying to focus on the more positive aspects of the show, it came across as a transparent method to divert attention. And did it work? Nope. Not in the least. In fact, the controversy became so synonymous with the show that some CBS affiliates threatened to pull the show entirely, never letting it air on their channel. While it's unknown if this ever happened, the fact that it got to that point speaks volumes as to how negative the brand had become. The episodes hadn't aired yet, but people were coming to a conclusion about the show. If the people involved were this miserable during production, what does this mean for the viewer? Who wants to watch something surrounded in misery? So when Princesses aired on September 27th, 1991, calling it a disaster would be far too kind. The few critics and audience members who watched it were not impressed. And as for a vast majority of Americans, they decided to watch something else. What exactly was it that they decided to watch? Literally everything else. The Princess's premiere ranked at the bottom of the Nielsen ratings for that week. A sitcom having its very first episode ranking dead last? That is unheard of. Normally, a show starts off strong and then declines as the season goes on, only to pick up at the finale. So for this to happen to one of CBS's quote-unquote promising new comedies, the network had to know that it was only going to get worse from here. And it did. Throughout its entire run, Princesses never got out of the bottom five. Despite the poor ratings and negative reception, CBS was determined to save the show. They even changed Princess's time slot so that it would appear next to the new hit comedy, Brooklyn Bridge. And as I'm sure you can gather, that didn't work. Once the eighth episode was done filming, Julie Haggerty walked off set. It was one fight too many. Not only did she storm off, but she never returned. In a somber press release, CBS said that Julie Haggerty had left the show due to a mutual decision. In other words, she quit and we didn't bother to chase after her. Once Haggerty left the show, it shut down. CBS, the producers, and Drescher alike had no idea what to do. 
Some executives at CBS wanted to go for a full reboot. All they'd have to do is get rid of the remaining two girls, and then the show would be basically brand new. All of the controversy that had gone on and the negative reception, they'll be things of the past. Of course, this plan neglects the fact that word getting out about the remaining two actresses, as well as one of the lead creators being fired from the show, would almost certainly doom whatever life it had left. Thankfully, a majority of the producers didn't see this as the right direction, and instead, wanted to write a story arc to replace Haggerty's character. Drescher was all for this, since the crux of the show would be the three different girls living three different lives, all being stuck under one roof. Eventually, though, this never happened. CBS was unable to find an actress interested or qualified enough to take Haggerty's place, so instead, CBS decided that the show would star a duo rather than a trio. Haggerty's character would leave the show and would not be replaced by anybody. The show would be all about Twiggy's naive character mixing with Fran Drescher's streetwise one, and hijinks would ensue. Unfortunately for princesses though, this new direction never got to happen. Weeks after this decision was made, CBS killed the show off. Out of the eight episodes produced, only five made it to air. The other three have never been aired in America. So, thanks to Julie Haggerty quitting the show, it never had a chance to pull itself out of the mud. Though, to be fair, it probably was never going to do that anyways since, again, the ratings were always dire and the few people who did stick around to watch it didn't like it at all. And poor CBS. 1991 was not their year. Most of the new shows that debuted were far from hits. Royal Family had to be cancelled because of the death of its star, Red Fox. And now this. They tried so hard, and it just couldn't stick. Because of the show's failure and the stigma around it, Princesses has only re-aired once. It was for one single episode on TV Land in 2010, and that was it. It was never seen again. In fact, it was lost media until 2022. I don't know how, but somebody found all eight episodes, even the ones that never aired. CBS, as well as the actresses involved, rarely, if ever, speak of the show. It was such a negative experience that no one wants to bring it up ever again. Whoops. But it's not all bad, though. It was thanks to princesses that we got the nanny. Fran Drescher went to go visit Twiggy in England, and they started coming up with ideas for a new show. One that, of course, would not feature Haggerty whatsoever. They came up with a concept of the nanny. And wouldn't you know it, when Drescher was boarding a plane to go to France, she ran into none other than Jeff Kazansky, the president of CBS. That impromptu airplane pitch led to one of CBS's biggest hits of that era. And who would have guessed that it would have come from a show like this? Look, I'll be honest, Princesses isn't the best show, but to say that it's one of the worst things ever like many critics did at the time, I don't think that's fair. To be honest, I think they were letting some of the negative press get to their heads and then allowed it to cloud their vision when they finally saw the show. Do I see this lasting more than one season on any other network? No. But does it deserve to constantly rank at the bottom five week after week? Definitely not. It just goes to show that PR is one of the most valuable things at a network's disposal. If a show like this is really this messy behind the scenes, Firstly, it's up to them to resolve the conflict, but if they can't do that, it's important for them to try to keep things under wraps, at least until the news can no longer do any damage. Because as we've seen here, the negative media coverage caused this destined to be short-lived show in CBS's expansive history. Was there anything that the actresses could have done to stop the fights? Was there anything CBS could have done? We'll never know. But I guess princesses will always stand as a sign for what not to do. Even if your actors don't get along, it's important that you do everything in your power to ensure that your show does not suffer a death by drama. Well folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? Have you ever seen princesses before? And if you have, what are your thoughts? Like I said, it's not that bad, it's just kind of okay. Honestly, I think the Palace Guard that aired right after was far better. But that's a story for another day, so comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. And now, it's time to thank our wonderful Patreon people, starting with our Masters of Fate.
Chan 11, Drew the Stew, Ellis Amir Rogers Archer, Kev Messick, Platinum Bass, Quiet Chap, Ryan Williams, Timey, and Woody Woo, and now our executive producers, Albert Robinson, Blackjack, H.R. Hoffman, Indiscreet One, Leaf Storm, Ravioli Supremo, Unkale, and who else but Zane? If you two would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then please consider donating to the Patreon. There's a link in the description below for you to check out. There are also links to the Media Mementos Discord server, as well as the second channel, Media Mementos Extra, where we have behind-the-scenes videos, short clips, and other sorts of subjectively entertaining things. Alright folks, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you guys next time!